goes uh, out to today. All right, what you got? Well, when I first moved here and the first woman that I went out on some dates with accused me of being overly nostalgic. Mm. And I said, wait until you start pushing 40. Just wait. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. So you were robbing the cradle is what was happening. <laughs> I have, I'm kidding. I, Go on. <laughs> I don't think that's the case. But um, And also I brought in something new here to speak to both of those things. The sure. nostalgic factor and uh, something new, like you talked about with the choral music, bringing in something new. If I were going to say I, I'm bringing in a guitar concerto, uh, what composer or player would leap to mind for you first? I'm thinking about uh, the Spanish people. So Torrega, Rodrigo, you know, mm -hmm. all of all. Of, maybe if I want to go South American, um, not Villalobos, uh, who, who's the who's the guy who wears a colonized name? I'm forgetting. Gina Stera, you know, Gina Stera. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Or a, a colonized pronunciation. Anyway, mm. those are the folks that will come straight to mind for me. So... I want to bring you a guitar concerto that was written in 2018 by Konstantin Karavasilis, who uh, grew up in Toronto, but his family uh, has a Greek heritage, so he was leaning heavily into Greek mythology. Mm. But he also borrows a Portuguese word, which is saudaja, and that has a lot of really romantic sort of definitions, yearning, nostalgia, missing, mm. you know, things like that. And I will say that there are certain parts of this concerto where he does sort of uh, conjure images of the Aranjuez concerto or, or uh, concerto for a gentleman, you know, those, those yeah. Rodrigo pieces. You can sort of hear that homage mm -hmm. to that lineage. But there was also the part in the, in the third movement that I brought, that I wanted to bring in, where it's just such a really interesting interaction that the guitarist has with the reed section. And see what you think about it being a reed player. the uh, Tallinn Chamber Orchestra featured there. You know, what What I hear, you know, you specifically asked about the reed playing. I hear the guitar soloist really being um, hugged in a way by the, by the wind instruments, really mm. accompanied in that way. I think mm. uh, traditionally when it comes to a concerto or a solo piece, we think about the soloist on top of the aesthetic with the orchestra like below that. But I think I hear the guitar solo coming through the aesthetic of the orchestra, which I think is very beautiful. And then, of course, you have the glockenspiel or the celeste. I can't tell which one it is uh, just by listening, but, you know, offering those little sprinkles on the top. Maybe yeah. it, it reminds me of like um, like a, a, like starlight, you know, where we're looking at a, at a night sky. And for every one of those glockenspiel hits, you know, one more star becomes... Lights up visual you know it, it is vis I, I was gonna say it's very visually pleasing this piece of music and that sounds weird to say but i think it is this this piece definitely has a beautiful look to it for sure you're a synesthet one sense uh triggering another yeah of course yeah so what what did that taste like to you when uh, you were see, listening I don't, I don't, <laughs> see my, my, my synesthesia see it's the uh it's the more traditional spanish okay. Uh, guitar music that has more of a taste to okay. me. <laughs> gotcha. But, but but this is definitely um, very beautiful. I do have to say, I'm not typically attracted to what I would call slow classical. Like it's really the shredding mm -hmm. that that I spend mm -hmm. uh, a lot of time with. I, uh, what what case uh, or or what place does this more softer aesthetic? And I'm not talking about dynamically, but just slower music. Sure. Why why is that something that you really uh, value i mean is it connected to this uh importance you place on nostalgia and those mm, things exactly because of for me nostalgia is uh oftentimes associated with a slow unwrapping of things you know almost like you're flipping through a scrapbook mm. or you're opening up 
uh, things from a, a box that belong to other people and your, you know, uh, things that your grandmother had, or, you know, you're opening up these little gifts that you had forgotten about. And I've been feeling really nostalgia lately. I just got back from that trip with my dad mm -hmm. and, um, this, the, I'm appreciating, uh, just savoring things and to sit and listen to the slower movements of that. I mean, I love the whole, uh, concerto, but it's the slower movements that just remind me of, uh, a nice wistful walk down through your memories. Mm. Again, let's listen to a, a little bit of the end of this guitar concerto by the composer Calabasilis. Jacob Bangsu playing the guitar along with the Talon Symphony Orchestra. There's something about being in a concert hall and, and you get to those silent moments. You know, it's like no one dares move, you know, like especially if it's an inner movement. Mm -hmm. Like and, and there's so <laughs> much care. And I don't I don't know. It's it's easy. I, I feel like I can say this is easy to play fast and loud on stage yeah, when yeah. you really have to bring it in that's where you really see the skill of an ensemble and, and and of a of a soloist and that was perfectly displayed there incredible piece of music there thanks for bringing that in you got it 